Charlene, and thank you for joining me today for the Way So Wonderful Live. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, and I'm coming to you live from Palm Springs, California. This program is not pre recorded, nor is it edited. It is live. I'm going to open our Way So Wonderful Life program today with our prayer affirmation, with a reminder of those words from the Mastermind Jesus to pray believing that it is, pray believing that. Whatever it is that your heart desires, every good desire is coming to you from the Father. As Jesus tells us, with God, all things are possible. As we read in the Gospel of Luke, that seems that which seems impossible for mankind is possible with God. And so we know that we can trust in God and turn to God and know that every good desire of our heart is responded to in the affirmative. Just as Jesus tells us, it's done unto you as you believe. So let's put belief and faith into our mind. As we go through this affirmation this morning, if you're not driving a vehicle or operating something mechanical, just pause for a moment and listen for that word, that phrase, or that statement that will stir up the spirit within you. Let's begin by saying these words out loud. Let's say them out loud if you can. I believe and I receive. Let's say that one more time. I believe and I receive, and let's know together that as we believe with a deep inward calm, that our word of faith is responded to in the affirmative. We can know that our word penetrates any and every unbelief in our thought. It casts out fear, removes doubts, and permits that which we desire to experience to be made manifest in the right and perfect time. As we have complete conviction that our prayers will be carried out in our experience with mathematical certainty, we can know that we're trusting in the law of good, which is the law of God. And as we have absolute reliance upon this law of good, which is the law of God, we can know that as we keep faith with God, everything works for our good. As we believe, we receive, and so it is, amen, and so it is, amen. So once again, this is the way to a wonderful life. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, and our Way to a Wonderful Life message for today is titled, Spirit-Empowered Living, Release the Power for Good in Your Life. Spirit-Empowered Living, Release the Power for Good in Your Life. So many of us go around thinking, thinking that about all the things of the world, and we get all caught up in the fear and the anxiety and the stress, and we just don't take that time to... Be still and let go and let God move through our mind, our heart, and our soul and take away that fear, take away that anxiety and cleanse our mind of all things so that we can be open and receptive to that greater good right where we are. It doesn't take, doesn't take a miracle for us to be able to live a life with joy and live a life with a, with a sense of a peace of mind that, that knows that God's grace and God's good is available to us. All we must do is think it. Think. Thoughts become faith. Faith can move the mountain, as Jesus said, move that mountain into the sea. And we know he wasn't telling us to move mountains into the sea, but telling us that we could do greater things, bigger things. We can make our best better, in other words. Now, most of us have learned that our thoughts develop our faith, and this we can know is the absolute truth, that we can be conscious of the pattern of our thoughts through reflection or contemplation, and in doing so, we can begin to master our thoughts and therefore consciously create a receptivity towards that greater good in all areas of our lives. I believe it is important to remind ourselves daily that our thoughts are like a double thread in our mind both human and divine, both of the world and of the otherworldly. And just as a negative person is not always negative, a spiritually-minded person is also not always thinking spiritual thoughts. We know this. Our daily activities almost guarantee us of the opportunity to shift back and forth in our mode of thinking. It is a shifting our perceptions to understand why we think and believe the way that we do that will give us that greater opportunity to strengthen our faith in the good, in God. So many times people get that feeling that they're limited, that they're all alone in the world, that that nobody can solve their problems for them, that, that everything is pressing against them. But we know that as we turn to God and feel that sense in our mind of that release of all the stuff that's negative, 
and let in that spirit that knows and knows that it knows whatever it is that we need to know, whatever it is that we need to do, and we still our mind and let the spirit guide us, we will find ourselves moving in the right direction no matter what it may be. Now, the master teacher, Eric Betterworth, in his book, Discover the Power Within You, Discover the Power Within You, and you can buy his book on barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com. That's Eric Betterworth, the great unity teacher and author. And You can find many of his other books when you go to amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com that will also enrich your life. He offers us an opportunity to find a way in which to shift our understanding and awareness based on the teachings of the mastermind Jesus. He writes, the command to turn the other cheek has been grossly misunderstood. It certainly doesn't mean that we should become doormats or invite further assault. It is strange when Jesus says, pluck out the eye, we know that he is using a metaphor that must be translated into a modern idea. When he says, cut off your hand, we know he doesn't mean it literally. Yet, we have missed a dynamic lesson because we have insisted on accepting the idea of turning the other cheek in a completely literal sense. Remember, Jesus has made the great discovery of the divinity of man. He was trying to help us realize that there is always a depth potential of strength, a deeper, deeper level of mind within us that's strong within us, even in times of weakness. He is telling us that if we find ourselves upset over something another person has said or done, our upset indicates that we have been in the wrong state of consciousness. To react to it in the same state of mind only compounds the problem within us. <clears throat> Jesus says, turn to the other side of your nature. You are both human and divine. There is that in you that can never be hurt, that is always poised and peaceful, that knows your spiritual unity with God and knows that no one can take your good from you. In this diviner state of consciousness, the hurt is healed, the influence of the other person on you is nullified, and you become a healing influence upon them. <clears throat> when we look at that, we think, wow, that truly is what Jesus was teaching. That truly was in the nature of Jesus' teaching, the nature of Jesus' way in which he treated everyone. Because Jesus didn't see enemies except that enemy within us that separates ourselves from God, separates ourselves from the good with our focus on the negative, with our focus on letting the, the fear enter into our mind. But as we take our focus and we turn it, turn it to our divine nature, that part of us, that spirit within us that knows and knows that it knows, always believes that it believes, that we're part of God, that we are that image likeness of God, and we turn back in our mind to find that image likeness, to remind ourselves that we are the strength of God, the joy of God, the love of God, the harmony of God, the beauty of God, and the peace of God made manifest. Clothed, God clothed our spirit in human form so that we could enjoy this thing called life, gifted us with this life, and realized that life is not a task. So we must turn to that part of us that knows this and knows this is the truth for us. And for some of us, that means simply to sit down, not to react. We don't have to react to everything. Just because somebody asks us a question doesn't mean we have to give them an immediate answer. We can say, I can get back to you on that. We can let ourselves feel, feel that we have something to connect to in a greater way that will give us the right answer, will give us the right action, that will give us the right guidance and direction in order to move our life forward into a greater feeling of confidence and strength and knowing that the Spirit is always available to us. You know, we need to remind ourselves of those words in the ancient wisdom, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And what is that Christ? It is that image, likeness of God within me, that part of God that Jesus tells us is the light within us says, there's a light within you. He says, you are the light of your world, the light of the world. We must begin to see ourselves as the light of our world 
and light symbolizes intelligence. It symbolizes radiance and vitality. It symbolizes being in the spirit and knowing that this power that's greater than we are is always available to us. Now, most of us who take the time, who take the time to reflect on what we have believed and accepted as true throughout the years will realize that our thoughts have changed about many different things. There was a time when we accepted roles in our life that no longer served us, and therefore we shifted in our thinking about what we choose to experience and what we no longer accept for ourselves. The ancient wisdom speaks to this as the age of reason, the time in our life when we form our own opinions and make our own choices. We are not here to live to someone else's idea of what our life should be, and more and more there are people who are finding the freedom to live to their own personal choices. It is an issue for many people to face uncertainty, yet our only way in which to experience real change and newness is to face uncertainty. As we take it into our mind that we are always supported by a power greater, though invisible, we shall see the invisible made visible in our experience. We shall see the work of God in our life if we let it be. Jesus said, it is the Father that doeth the work. It is the Father. The Father is spirit, and we must worship him, trust in him, depend on him, look to him, turn to him in spirit and in truth. And as we do, <coughs> we shall see the workings of God in our life. I have seen people move across the country with no guarantee of a job, and what appeared to be limited funds. But with their enthusiasm for change and their positive hope that whatever they need will show up, they have been successful in creating a new life for themselves. Early in my studies, I often heard the statement, argue for your limitations and they're yours. Argue for your limitations and they're, they're yours. And this has always proven to be true, as I have worked with people to pursue their goals and faith, and the faith in their ideals, our faith in the all good can prove for us that limitations are only a part of limited thinking, and in truth, we have the power of spirit and intelligence within us to reject any limited thought and open ourselves to the more, the greater, and the better at all times, at all times, to open ourselves to the more, the greater, and the better at all times. And that's why Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, a mustard seed, a mustard seed is so, so very small that if you put it on the palm of your hand and you wear glasses, you take your glasses off, you won't even see it. And if you just slightly breathe on it, it'll fly away. He said you can move the mountain into the sea. So he's telling us you can do big things, greater things, amazing things. Take the limitations off your mind and know that it is the Father that doeth the work that you're not going to do it. All you must do is see the result. See it done unto you as you believe. See yourself being done unto with a greater prosperity, a greater health, a greater success, a greater joy, a greater loving companionship, whatever it may be, a greater creativity, whatever it is, whatever it is that gets you excited about life, enthused about life, interested in life, because when we're interested in life, we feel the joy of life. When we're not interested in life, we lose our joy. We lose our joy. The joy of the spirit that wants to move through our mind, our heart, and our soul to give us that, that new thing, that new idea. Now, the mystical Ernest Holmes tells us, and I've used this quote before, and I want to use it again today, quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. So what does he mean, quench not the spirit? That means to take the limitations out of our mind, to stop seeing that we're, we're stuck in this material existence and that there's nothing else going on but what we can see, hear, feel, taste, and touch. It's our understanding and believing and keeping faith with that invisible presence that we call God, that invisible presence that's filled with the power, filled with the intelligence, filled with the spirit, that can move through our mind, our heart, and our soul and bring forth to our awareness a greater idea for ourselves, a greater image of ourselves, a greater feeling of being connected and in tune with the infinite and in tune 
with the infinite good, just as Jesus says, if your mind is stayed on God, on the good, then all good things shall be added unto you. So quench not the spirit, Ernest Holmes tells us. We are not to be ashamed of our trust in God, nor are we to deny that inner light, that inner light that lights every person's reason to the ultimate reason of of all, that lights every person's reason to the ultimate reason of all. And so as we allow ourselves to think in our mind that we do not want to quench not the spirit, we don't want to hold back those ideas in our mind, we want to let our imagination go to that greater, to that higher image and likeness of ourselves, knowing that whatever the highest we can believe about ourselves, that's getting close to what God sees us as being. What, what, is, what, do, what do we believe is the image likeness that God has of us? So we must formulate in our mind a greater image likeness of God, God intelligence, God power, God spirit, moving, permeating through every living thing, always available, closer to us than breathing, as the poet said, near than hands and feet, and know that this invisible power is greater than the power of gravity. This invisible intelligence is greater than any, any knowledge known to mankind. And this greater spirit, this greater spirit, is alive and well and moving through the universe, seeking for an outlet to all those who have faith in it, recognize it, identify with it, and declare that it's the truth. Let's let ourselves get into that frame of mind. Let's go to the book of James 1, 6 in the Holy Bible. But let them ask in faith with no doubting. But let them ask in faith with no doubting. For they who doubt are like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. Oh, those are strong words, but we all must bring that into our mind and let ourselves find that place in our mind where we are at with our faith. Where is my faith? Well, what am I thinking about? What are my thoughts? What have I been thinking about all morning? What have I been thinking about yesterday? The pattern of our thoughts creates our faith. Is that, are those thoughts towards the good, or are those thoughts towards the greater, or are those thoughts towards the negative? You know, in Los Angeles, with all those earthquakes going on, I'm sure a lot of people are saying, well, <laughs> I've been shaken up. I'm not so sure I know where my faith is right now. Maybe my faith is in the big one coming, but let's get our let's get our mind together and realize that right now, right where we are, is where is all that we have. So in this moment, let's start thinking about having that good life, that more wonderful life, that that joyful life that that God wants for all of us by by thinking about where we are in the present moment. The big one hasn't come. There'll be time enough to think about that and work with that when it does come. So let them ask in faith with no doubting, for they who doubt are like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For they who doubt are like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. That's from the book of James in the Scriptures, James 1, 6. James 1, 6, if you want to look it up. So we, have both, we are both human and divine, and just as a negative person is not always negative, a spiritually-minded person is also not always thinking spiritual thoughts. So our daily activities, especially the activity of our thoughts in our mind, almost guarantee us of the opportunity to shift back and forth in our mode of thinking. And it is this shifting our perceptions to understand why we think and believe the way that we do that will give us the greater opportunity to strengthen our faith in the good, to strengthen our faith in the good. Just, just let ourselves think it. I, my faith is strong. My faith is strong. I believe that God is. I believe that God is with me. I believe that God is moving through my mind, my heart, and my soul right now, giving me that idea to make my best better right where I am. Start letting that move through your mind. Let it move through your heart. The great Dr. O.C. Smith would tell us, there is no spot where God is not. And in those simple words, it's a profound truth. Just like where we are, gravity is. We can't see it. We can't photograph it. We can't draw a picture of it. But right where we are, gravity is, though it's invisible. Right where we are is the air that we breathe. It's below us, above us, pressing against us. We inhale it. We exhale it. Though it's invisible, we depend on it for life and our physical body. So just as these great invisible things in the natural 
in the natural are so important to us, even more important is that invisible presence that we call God, that invisible intelligence, that invisible power, that invisible spirit that only works for us when we recognize it and identify it as so. Let's look at these words from Eric Butterworth. Now, this is from his book, Life is for Living. Life is for Living. He tells us how easy it is to lose sight of our objective in life. How easy it is to lose sight of our objective in life. We often exist from day to day believing that the most important thing is a kind of peace that means no problems, that means no changes, and means no challenges. Life is for living and growing and overcoming. Your purpose in life is to grow and develop as a person, to release your own inner potential. Life is for living, and you can live in peace and happiness and fulfillment in terms of inner growth and outer achievement. Let's look at those words again. Life is for living, and you can live in peace and happiness and fulfillment in terms of inner growth, both inner growth and outer achievement. Start where you are and do what you can with what you have. What you can do depends only upon your faith to believe that God, that God is your all-sufficiency in all things, that God is your all-sufficiency in all things. So Eric Butterworth tells us how to release the power for good in our life, and that is to learn to depend only upon our faith to believe that God is our all-sufficiency in all things. So what does that mean? That means every time we think about something, we close our mind to the world and we take God into our mind. We take God into our thoughts. Think about what is this day going to be for me? Is it going to be a day of success and prosperity? Is it going to be a day of joy and confidence? Is it going to be a day of solving problems, finding solutions? Is it going to be a day of, of realizing that there's more to life than what I see? Or is it going to be just an old, another old day like the day before and the day before that where my mind wasn't focused on the good, my mind wasn't focused on that higher truth, that higher power, that higher intelligence, that higher spirit that is always seeking to move through me, through my body of affairs, as something good and very good, because that's how God created this world in which we live and declared it all as good and very good, but it's up to us to declare our circumstances, our body of affairs as good and very good. So let's continue with our mind open and receptive today. Let our mind be open and receptive to that greater good, that higher good. And don't be concerned about how the things are going to happen. Don't be concerned about how the things will come together. Just know, as Jesus did, that it is the Father that doeth the work. The Father works and then I work. In other words, God gives us that good desire, but it's our work to see it, to see the end result, to see it as we seek it to be, as we choose it to be, to see it as we believe God wants it to be good and whole and perfect, so that we can feel that wholeness of health. That, that means the holiness of health, the wholeness of success and prosperity and joy and creativity in all that we do. So depend upon our faith is to align our thoughts with this truth for us and that we can realize the good results of what we entertain in our mind as we keep telling ourselves that God is our all-sufficiency in all things. As we reject the thoughts that create limitations, that create excuses, and create the things that seemingly block us from the good that we desire and replace these thoughts with images and ideas that empower us, we shall find a greater sense of the Spirit being empowered through us, as us, and for us to do that which we desire to experience, to do that which we desire to experience. But we must learn how to do it. And Jesus gave us that one, one easy little lesson, which is to turn the other cheek. And let's go back to Eric Butterworth and read what he has to tell us about turning the other cheek. And this is from his book, Discover the Power Within You, and that's by Eric Butterworth. And you can find his book on barnesandnoble.com or <clears throat> amazon.com. And when you, you search for books under Eric Butterworth, you'll find many books that will enrich your life and get you in tune with the infinite in a greater way. He writes, the command to turn the other cheek 
has been grossly misunderstood. It certainly doesn't mean that we should become doormats or invite further assault. It is strange when Jesus says, pluck out the eye, we know that he is using a metaphor that must be translated into a modern idea. When he says, cut off your hand, we know he doesn't mean it literally, yet we have missed a dynamic lesson because we have insisted on accepting the idea of turning the other cheek in a completely literal sense. Remember, Jesus has made the great discovery of the divinity of man. He is trying to help us realize that there is always a depth potential that is a deeper, deeper level within us of strength, even in times of weakness. He is telling us that if we find ourselves upset over something another person has said or done, our upset indicates that we have been in the wrong state of consciousness, which consciousness is our state of mind, and to react to it in the same state of mind only compounds the problem within us. Jesus says, turn to the other side of your nature. You are both human and divine. There is that in you that can never be hurt, that is always poised and peaceful, that knows your spiritual unity with God, and knows that no one can take your good from you. No one can take your good from you. In this diviner state of consciousness, the hurt is healed, the influence of the other person on you is nullified, and you become a healing influence, influence upon him. That's from the great Eric Butterworth. So let's remind ourselves of Job in the Bible who went through disaster after disaster, but finally he got it in his mind, and in his own sense of the presence of the power of spirit, he declared, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. And as we know that he that Job refers to is a confusion in his own mind. So as we remind ourselves that in every problem there is a solution, in every change and opportunity, and in every challenge there can be spiritual growth, then we shall realize a greater sense of the presence of the Spirit in our lives, and we shall experience Spirit-empowered living with grace and ease, and so it is. When he has tried me, when all those negative thoughts are out of my mind and I let God in, I shall come forth as gold. Let's remember that today and every day, and let's <clears throat> realize for ourselves spirit-empowered living and release that power for good in our life by releasing in our mind, letting move through our mind all things of a negative nature and displacing them with all the good thoughts, the good images of that which we choose to experience beginning right now. And so it is. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for being with me. This has been The Way to a Wonderful Life, coming to you live from Palm Springs, California. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates. I'm teaching from the philosophy of the mastermind Jesus, the wisdom of the ancients, and the evolutionary science of mind and spirit. This program was not pre-recorded, nor was it edited. It is live. For more information about this ministry, please visit www.revbates.tv or www.revbatesontheradio.org. You can also find me on YouTube.com by going to YouTube.com and typing in the search box, The Way to a Wonderful Life Channel. That's The Way to a Wonderful Life Channel, where you'll find over 200 of my radio broadcasts that you can listen to 24-7 in both English and Spanish. You can also go to MSN, Yahoo, Bing, and Google and type in the search box, Reverend Henry. Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, and you'll find everything you want to find out about this ministry. Now, this is a healing and teaching ministry, spiritual but not religious, as we go beyond religion and we focus on those simple yet profound universal spiritual healing principles given to us by the mastermind Jesus so that we can believe in our prayer and the answer to it. For we believe and we know that God responds to us by corresponding to our faith and our belief that with God 
All good things are possible. All good things are possible. Now, if you'd like, you can send me your prayer requests, your questions, your comments about this program, and you can also send a tithe, a donation, or a faith offering in support of this radio ministry, which I will greatly appreciate. And you can do that from the website, RevBates.tv, or you can mail those to Reverend Henry Bates. That's B-A-T-E-S, just like Bates Motel, Rev Bates Ministries, P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. Once again, I want to say God bless you and God bless us all. Let's keep God in our heart today. That means let's keep the good in our heart and our mind and our soul, and let's know that we can rejoice and give thanks right now, right where we are, for the best of times and the best of everything, when our mind is in tune with the infinite good. And so it is. Amen.